As the Browns go and look for a coach, here's the thing to keep in mind of, well, what kind of organization do the Browns have now? Because they've tried all sorts of different types. For example, when Butch Davis was here and when Eric Mangini was here, those are coach-driven organizations. In other words, the coach, Mangini, Butch Davis, had a lot to say on drafting and all that. In my mind, oftentimes, that wasn't a particularly good deal going. And you know who else had a lot to say, although he doesn't like to admit it? Hugh Jackson had quite a bit of power with this organization. Now, John Dorsey with his lieutenants, Elliot Wolf is his top assistant, and he has another guy, Alonzo Highsmith. These guys, very experienced, work together in Green Bay. They're a strong front office. They're the guys picking the players. And in my mind, the most important people in an NFL organization, other than having a good owner, is who picks the players. Because it's easier to finally get the coach right than it is to get all the players right, especially a quarterback right. We've seen that here. Therefore, what the Browns need in a head coach is a guy who will work you know, in collaboration with the front office. I think one of the reasons Greg Williams, by the way, has some success is you know, he and Freddie Kitchens and John Dorsey, they seem to work together pretty well. Now, it's pretty apparent Greg Williams is not going to probably get this job. So as they look at different people, you know, the thing to keep in mind is how does this guy – blend with the front office because we can't have any more internal discord, internal discord. We've had enough of that over the years. So as I look at all that, that's why I think you see, for example, Dan Campbell from New Orleans emerging as a top candidate because he's kind of a collaborative guy. You see Matt Eberflus from Indianapolis, again, emerging as a top candidate, I think, a very serious one. I had one NFL person assist to me. Don't be surprised. In the end, they, they turn around and make Freddie Kitchens the head coach. Uh, maybe. I really don't know. But I do know this, that this is a crucial hire because once the Browns changed coaches at midseason, did you notice how the drama stopped? The drama stopped first when they traded Josh Gordon. And then the drama stopped when Todd Haley and Hugh Jackson were fired. The drama stopped because suddenly there was order. Dorsey's running the team. Greg Williams is coaching it. Freddie Kitchen's calling the place. Now, that may be a short-term answer, but that model, the strong general manager, a coach who's willing to work, you know, bring discipline and accountability to the players, or as he says, be the leader of men, but also work in a big collaboration with the front office, and then allowing a young and gifted offensive coordinator, Freddie Kitchens, to do his own thing and develop his relationship with the quarterback and grow, that to me is a formula for success. So they have to find the right coach, frankly, to fit in there, in my mind, between Freddie Kitchens and the front office.